Maria Leonora of Brandenburg was a German princess and the Empress of Sweden in the year 1620. She was married to the Swedish king named Adolphus. After several miscarriages, Leonora found out that she was pregnant and was desperate to give a son to her husband. In 1626, she finally gave birth to a baby girl named Christina. When presented with the baby, Marie rather tastefully started screaming that instead of a son, she was given a daughter who is dark and ugly. She even insisted to take the girl away from her, saying that she will not have such a monster. Maria tried to injure and almost killed the child several times. It was said, when Christina was a little girl, she was repeatedly met with strange accidents. There's an incident where a beam fell mysteriously upon the cradle while the baby is sleeping in it. She fell from a flight of stairs, apparently by accident. But it was her mother indeed. On another occasion, the nursemaid was blamed for dropping the baby onto a stone floor, injuring her shoulder. It remained a little crooked, even after several years. Even more disturbing is that, after the death of her husband in 1633, the queen brought his body to her palace, and she made her daughter sleep in a bed, over which her father's rotting heart was hung in a casket. Phalaris was the Greek tyrant of the city-state of Acragas in Sicily, between 570 and 554 BC. He was well known for his gruesome torture technique, the brazen bull. He was renowned as a cruel ruler who used the wealth of his city to look for new ways of executing criminals. A Greek inventor named Perillos promised Phalaris an entirely new method of torture. This horrific contraption involved placing a person inside a burning bronze bull. Phalaris wanted to make sure that the torture device works properly, so he ordered Perillos, the man who created it, to be thrown into it first. Thus guaranteeing that the horrendous bull worked. Even before they had been forced into the bull, Phalaris ordered that the victims had had their tongues cut and their hands bound with a rope. Once the person is thrown into the bull, the fiber is lit underneath, where the heat of its metal body roasted him alive. The pipes and whistles converted the screams of the victim to the snorts and growls of a real bull. So it would seem like the bull came to life. He would sit there and enjoy, while his poor victims scream in agony. Vlad the Impaler, also known as Vlad III, was the Prince of Wallachia and a medieval warlord in Romania. Before his reign began, Vlad was imprisoned and was tortured for quite some time. During this period, he had witnessed the cruel impalement of his Ottoman enemies. His father, Vlad II, was expelled as ruler of Wallachia by the local warlords and was murdered in the swamps near Balteni in 1447. Vlad's older brother, Mercia, was also tortured, blinded and buried alive. These disturbing events turned Vlad III into a ruthless killer in a matter of historical speculation. Once, Vlad hosted a dinner, to which he invited everyone who had proclaimed opposition to him. As they arrived, he ordered his men to stab them all, impaling their still twitching bodies on the spikes, for all the people in the town, to look at them. He thought that this tactic was so effective at striking fear into the hearts of his enemies. He began using it on anyone who opposed him. People began to call him by a fearsome nickname, Vlad the Impaler. He did this to more than 20,000 people, and killed as many as 60,000 others, during his bloody ring. He would often leave people impaled, and put on display outside his castle, as they suffered a slow and painful death. It is even said that, he used to dine, among his impaled enemies, while dipping his bread in their blood. Ursabid Bathory was born in 1560 to one of the most powerful Protestant families in Hungary. By the time she was 15, she was married to Count Ferenc, a soldier who later became the commander of the armies of Hungary. After the death of her husband in 1604, the word began to spread about her sadistic activities. It was said that she enjoyed torturing and killing young girls in her castle. One day, a servant girl was brushing Elizabeth's hair, when she accidentally pulled too hard, and it tugged on a jag in her hair. Elizabeth erupted in anger, jumped up on her feet, and struck the girl with the back of her hand. 
The strike was so hard that it made the girl bleed, and some of her blood was left on Elizabeth's hand. Later that night, Elizabeth noticed that the skin on her hand, where the blood had been spilled, looked more youthful than she had seen it in ages. She was obsessed with it, and believed that the human blood would keep her looking young and healthy. So she decided to bathe in her victim's blood as a way to retain her legendary beauty. The initial torture began with jamming pins and needles under the fingernails of her servant girls. Girls as young as 10 were said to have been abducted by Bathory, beaten severely, and mutilated before freezing or starving to death. Some girls were allegedly burned with hot tongs. She tied them down, smeared them in honey, and left them to be attacked by bees and ants. Ivan IV was a Tsar of Russia in the 16th century. He established a tradition of absolute rule. While his armies terrorized his Tatar enemies, Ivan ensured that the Russians would feel his wrath too. Ivan divided the realm into the Zemshchina and the Oprichnina. The enforcers of the Oprichnina, also known as the Oprichniki, had one job. To terrorize Ivan's enemies. Dressed all in black, they were Ivan's personal bodyguard. Shockingly, the Oprichniki were also granted total immunity from all laws, and a complete right to torture and murder anyone Ivan suspected of betrayal. The Oprichniki were utterly ruthless, riding around with severed dog heads attached to their saddles to symbolize the sniffing out of traitors. Anyone Ivan suspected of disloyalty was tortured and horribly put to death. He was so ruthless that he ordered his men to use women for target practice. His most common execution methods include boiling alive, impalement, being roasted over an open fire, or being torn limb from limb by horses. It was also said that Ivan beat up his pregnant daughter-in-law hard enough to cause a miscarriage because he didn't like the way she was dressed. Ivan's aggrieved son, who was also named Ivan, decided to confront his father. During the heated argument, Ivan accidentally struck his son in the head with a scepter. The blow was hard enough to kill him. In 1570, he found out that the prominent citizens were conspiring against him. So he ordered them to be roasted alive on specially constructed frying pans. These unfortunate people suffered a slow and agonizing deaths 